Big publishers eject too soon from live service titles, says the Warframe boss. Oh, I wished better things for us. It comes out, it doesn't work, and they throw it away. So what he's saying is a lot of developers abandon their flops before they can become not flops, specifically in regards to live service games. Um, I showed this to Mossa before we started, and Mossa's counterpoint was, no, I don't think you abandoned them fast enough. Some of these games, like Anthem, should have been abandoned earlier. Honestly, the Wonder Woman game should already be abandoned. It shouldn't even come out. Y'all making some of these is, is too long. Yeah, no. Suicide Squad. Yeah, Squad. Abandoned yeah. that one. Should, should, that should Skull be and Bones. Skull and Bones, 100%. Realistically, if Ubisoft was so desperate for money, they should have scrapped Skull and Bones 10 years ago. Ah. So it's just a Digital Extreme CEO Steve Sinclair has said that game companies must have more faith in live service projects, even if they struggle at launch. In an interview with VGC, Sinclair lamented the trend of large companies in live service space abandoning titles quickly following launch stumbles. They think the release is make or break. It's not. They have a financial way to be persistent and they'll never do it, Sinclair said. It comes out, it doesn't work, and they throw it away. First impressions are so important. To this fucking day, there are people that think that EA Battlefront 2 still has all that fucking loot box bullshit because of first impressions of that. First impressions are so, so very important. For every game like... No Man's Sky that does manage to escape that void that they trap themselves in. You got a hundred other ones that just never got away. Yo, and, and you still have people saying fuck No Man's Sky. Like there's a lot of people that were just yeah. like, oh, they finally fixed it. But there's still a lot of people that won't give it a chance because of how the launch went. And the, the way this guy's acting, it's like, like a Destiny bad expansion. The launch is actually so, like imagine if Destiny, I actually don't know how Destiny 2 launch went. Right, awesome. but imagine, like, imagine mm -hmm. if it was dog shit, like the actual was. proper. Was it? I thought it was light. I thought Destiny Two was light. Not until well, no. people, the people in this industry, they act like it's supposed to be like movies or TV, where they get like some sort of cult following after like the release of the first season, you know, or it starts picking up in the second or third season, where mo a lot of TV shows actually start finding their legs and using them properly. But with the gaming industry, there's just so much. There's so many new games that come out. Every two, three weeks, there's a new game. And people yep. just, you know, move on. They get their first impression of something, and then they just, like, all right, well, it's shit. Well, all right, well, I'll just wait for the next game that's going to be released and check that out. It's okay. There's such a cycle. There's such a quick cycle for this in the gaming industry. Yeah, I mean, like, some games are able to. Like Destiny 2, for example. Now, that was the second game in a Now franchise. And it started off fucking terribly. People fucking hated it. People went back to playing Destiny 1 for a while. And they were able to kind of get a cult following. And it's been hit or miss with them ever since, right? So so you can. It's just, are you going to be that like one exception? I don't think so. And what are the odds that you're actually going to? Why not try to get this game ready for release? And not do this shit where it's like, oh, well... It's not ready, but we're putting it out there, and it's it's going to be a clusterfuck, and then... But people will stick by us, even though we gave them something that, uh, you know, we under-delivered and over-promised. But they're going to stick with us, because reasons. I, no. I know it's not live service, but the most recent Star Wars game, not um, the newer one, the, the Gingerhead one, where they even came yep. out and said... Yeah, we're releasing a broken game. No one stuck with it. That was the least talked than the first original, which actually came out actually not broken. And that, you want to you know, know what people... happened with that? Yeah. Most people said, oh, okay, it's going to be broken. I'm not going to buy it. And they they said to themselves, oh, maybe I'll check it out later on down the road. And guess what? They're never going to check it out because other games came out that weren't broken that they could play. Yep. Mm -hmm. He added, isn't it a shame when you put so many years of your life into irritating those into irritating those system or building technology or building the start of a community and because the operating costs are high, you get terrified when you see the numbers drop and leave. Um, real quick on this one, Concord. Case closed. Dead before yeah. arrival. Set your expectations. 
Low. And prepare to be disappointed. Um, we've seen with amazing releases that I think I have that, that I think have massive potential, and I think they eject too soon. Again, I'll go back to Moz's point. A lot of them should have ejected earlier. High-profile live service titles that have shut down in recent years include EA's Knockout City, fucking hell, which lasted over two years. Um, Smilegate's Crossfire X, which lasted just one year. Platinum Games Babylon Fall. I think me and Mozzle were doing our best to carry that game. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, that lasted yeah. 11 months. And EA Anthem, which closed after two years. Did Anthem last two years? I did. Two yeah. years. Yeah, two but years people, of nobody playing around. it. Dude, it dropped to like what? Like 200 people playing? Concurrently? I think we can add like, Suicide Squad to this really list pretty long. soon. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Digital Extremes Warframe was an early entry into modern live service space when it was first released in 2013. Yeah, see, now here's the thing, though. Like, it was good. I think it's yeah. well and easy for him to say this because he's got Warframe. He's saying, hey, we managed to fucking survive all this time, and I can't remember the launch of Warframe. I'm pretty sure, though, it wasn't launched as a clusterfuck like a lot yeah. of them are now. Crucial yeah. factor compared to most of the, uh, just about all those games that were referenced in the article here warframe was free to play and it still is the, another big crucial factor about this is that games are so fucking expensive these days especially like triple a titles where they're coming up with like 70 80 bucks and that's not even counting taxes compared to where you're at 